make sure that every classroom has a bracket for a television set in, because it's been years since they needed a television set, but nobody thought to repeal the rules. So the most important 21st century skills that teachers and schools have to embrace? Mm. Oh. I, I think I think we're in we're in a moment of great change. I think I think what technology has done to us is allow us to do things we couldn't do before. So a lot of what a lot of what humankind is doing is at the margins. You know, we could we could never dig oil that deep. We could never have so many people in the air so cheaply. We could never have such a complex banking system. And because we're doing everything at the margin, when it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Um, and so our life in this century, in the 21st century, has been full of surprises. We didn't expect an oil leak from a mile down. We didn't expect economic collapse in Ireland, you know, Iceland. Um, we, we didn't expect um, uh, the volcanic ash cloud to stop all our flights, you know. So the most important thing, the most important thing for teachers and for students is to be surprised because We've got to learn to be ready for a world that is full of surprises. And that's a big difference because the old world, we were learning, we kind of met before curriculum. You know, we'd, we'd open the exam paper and say, I hope there's no surprises, you know. And the teachers would say, I hope I prepared them for everything, you know. And, and, and that's the very opposite of what's needed. So it's a long answer to say, really, the most important thing in this century, for teachers and learners, is to be constantly astonished. I mean, surprise won't really do it. You've got to go, I was never expecting that. And astonishment, I think, is going to be the rest of our lives. The old division between work and social life has got very blurred, and, and rightly so. I guess for many people watching this, their, their retirement will be a much more blurred thing rather than I've ended work and now I've, you know, at the weekend I'm sailing my boat, my phone is still ringing, I still get my emails. It's all it's all become very blurred. And I think in that world that crosses over to between home and learning, the things that are nice about home, the things that are delightful about home, want to be in our learning too. And what a big part of that is the social dimension. Um, so those social dimensions turn up to be made of playfulness, of, of belonging, of membership, of mutuality. But also we're in a very, very visual world. And the children are running around the show at the moment with little phones capturing the decibel levels of the show and, and they're building a soundscape of the whole show to see which are the loud bits and which are the quiet bits and then they're going to use that to look at the design of the spaces, you know. All that is visual and aural, nothing's written down. So I think we're in a world where sight is much more important and data visualisation, the ability to, you know, if I showed you data about the banking collapse, you know, it just trillions, millions, you know, glazes over. If I show you a visualisation of it, it's important. So I think, I think to be good learners, they have to be visual learners. To be engaged learners, they've got to be playful learners. And it turns out that visual learning is quite playful. So they just all come nicely together, I think. We'll do more of the same next year, for sure. It's an interesting time because I think we've had a very dour 20 years. <laughs> sort of Protestant ethic, you know, has been very, you know. Um, I don't think our teachers have had enough fun. And I don't think our head teacher, I was talking to some head teachers in China and I said in 20 years time what do you think might have changed and one of them rather delightfully she thought and she said you know she said uh, hopefully there may be a little more joy <laughs> and she's right you know and I think for our teachers they're going to be teaching for the rest of their lives that they're never you're not going to retire you know <laughs> they're going to be doing this for a long time so if they're not having a lot of fun with it it's not delightful they're missing something and you know, delightful, playful visual learning engages the children, but it engages them too. So I, I think we've forgotten to apply the lessons that we know about engaging children to ourselves. And I think, you know, professional development should be engaging and seductive and playful and delightful and surprising. Probably at the moment it's a bit dull. <laughs> so I think, I think it's going to be a great decade. I think teachers are going to have more fun in the next 10 years than they've had in their whole career so far. And. Uh, I rather enjoy that. I remember the very earliest time when children were playing computer games. Teachers would, would worry that they'd become addicted to the game. They were concentrating too hard and focusing for too long. Well, when I was a child, I used to read a book under the cover in the bed and 
my parents worried that I was reading for too long and too much. You know? <laughs> I think the big thing we've learned from it is about immersion. And children really, really enjoy an intellectual challenge. They immerse themselves in it. I was just talking to a group of teachers where they're planning to do a sleepover. They have a new space. They said, how might we use it better? I said, just don't leave it, sleep in it. Spend, you know, for three days, just be in there. And Children love immersion. They love to be completely immersed in something. Everybody, every parent watching this will know that when their children are really enjoying something, they just don't want to ever stop. In education, we've spent too much time stopping and stopping and stopping. Above all else, what we learn from games is kids, when they're having a good time, they don't want to stop. And I don't mean when they're having an easy time. You know, the thing about games is they're really hard. And that's what makes them want to stay engaged. Learning should be hard. It should be engaging. I could say a trivial thing and an important thing. The, um, the trivial thing is, this is the most fun you're going to have in your professional life, you know, so <laughs> you're not enjoying it now, you're doing something wrong. Uh, but the serious thing, I think, would be, I, I think the world's a bit broken. I think it's, um, it's full of people who hate each other. The news from America this week, the news from most of the world most weeks, is of, um, of hate and conflict. I, I believe we can mend that we're learning. I think children who learn together um, just want to cohabit together and want to build a better world together. So probably nothing is more important than this. You know, what, what you do with learning in the next 10 years um, will determine the future of the world. And uh, that's pretty important. So what would you say to the students of today? I'd say exactly the same thing because the students of today are also the teachers. I mean, children are learning from and with each other. They're teaching their parents. I've, I've got nothing different to say to the teachers and to the, because every student is a teacher, every teacher is a learner. We're all in this together. And I'll tell you what, it's tough, but it's good. I also spoke to Professor Stephen Heppel and he advised us on what we could, um, what we could put in our classroom.